Everyone, it's LS, and this video is going to be talking about the strongest champion in the game. Seen Twitter the last couple of weeks, or you've tuned into any of my co streams or whatnot, you may have seen me talk about Kaisa. Whether you saw me interact with some of the tweets on Twitter, or saw other content creators end up playing the build that I talked about, this video has been a long time coming. I waited to actually see if there would be any more changes that happened to Kaisa, and it doesn't seem like it's going to end up being the case. A lot of people obviously know that Kaisa has a lot of different builds, but we're only going to be talking about one in particular today, and that is the AP variation. A little bit of history before we get into some things. Kaisa AP is not something new. It's not a secret or anything like that. In fact, it was actually very powerful last year. There were a lot of people that were playing AP Kaisa. The problem with that variation of AP Kaisa is you would sort of get a Build-A-Bear workshop, and sometimes Kaisa would not come online until items. Three items typically occurred between 25 and 27 minutes. This meant that that version of Kai'Sa actually had a really clear weakness, which was dragon stacking, because she wouldn't come online in time. The past version of Kai'Sa would end up going Static Shiv, and then after that it would pick up Nashers, and after that it would end up picking up Ludens, even though Leandris was actually better. This iteration of Kai'Sa is not going to end up going Static Shiv, and it's just going to forego it entirely, and immediately move into the AP items second. The core of the build is pretty simple. You're going to end up going Monomune into Ludens Companion, and then you're going to follow it up with Crypt Loom. After a Crypt Loom, some of the items that you're going to end up getting are going to be game dependent. Sometimes you will end up getting Zhanya's, other times you'll end up getting Leandri's just to further your poke, and maybe in other instances you actually will get Death Cap, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Even with the loss of Static Shiv, getting the Q Evolve through Monomune and everything still allows you to have the wave clear that you need to convert into mid game. The thing about doing things this way is it allows Kaisa to come online by third and fourth dragon fight, and she's already going to be a menace at two items because she's going to pack quite a punch. The current AP items are actually no joke on her, and when she actually does get that third item completed, gets the Crypt Bloom, gets more ability haste, has all the points in W, etc. I would argue that she's probably top five champion in the game. One of the things that I would note is if you know that the opponents are going to stack obscene amounts of magic resistance, then yes, you can skip Crypt Bloom and you can go Void Staff for a larger in-depth explanation of that. My video where I, I spent four or five hours going through all of the items actually has a part that talks specifically about that type of stuff. So that would just be a lot better. I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised to hear me say this, but Robidon's is actually going to be probably best in slot along with Zanya's. And the reason that I say probably is because if you saw on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, I actually incorrectly defended a statement on the current new Leandri's compared to last season, where I thought that it actually did more damage than Leandri's. And I was actually in fact wrong after looking at it, doing this video and running the new numbers and everything else. So with that being said, the damage Damage is very, very close between Leandri's and Robidon's, but that's mostly on the poke. Because it is so close, you could make an argument, I suppose, for the HP of Leandri's, but that's genuinely not real. Anyone who you hear make that argument, if you hear me make that argument, rather than just bring it up as a niche nice little thing to add about the item, then it's just not really real because it doesn't have anything to do with what you're trying to do on Kai'Sa. So with that being said, Robidon's does just deal more damage. It does give you a higher burst. And so that means that fourth item best in slot is going to always be Robidon's or Zhonya's, depending on game state. And then fifth item, respectively, is going to be one or the other that you hadn't already built. And for reference, the starting build is going to be starting off with a Doron's Blade. You're going to end up wanting to pick up a Cull at some point and then just going into the Monomune. This is going to be a little bit different than the Serrated Dirk inside of Laning Phase, and that means that on your initial first recall, you're going to be missing probably about 5% total damage inside of very heavy trades. If you end up having a delayed recall and you actually have even more gold and you have more AD through Long Swords and whatnot, you'll end up missing up to about 10% damage in trades if you have like Dirk Long Sword times two versus just like triple Long Sword all as you're powering into the Monomune. That can sound like a lot, but again, in a competitive environment where you're playing towards a inevitability and a win con, really not going to be at the end of the world and you're going to be totally fine because you're, you're playing towards this Exodia type situation. Okay, so for runes, there's two different runes that you're going to end up going. One of them is Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and then here you can either take Treasure Hunter or Relentless. Any other hunter that you're going to take in the final fourth row is just complete waste. It's a total joke. Do not bother with any of it. You can take Treasure probably inside of solo queue, but maybe in competitive Relentless is just better so that 
you can just continue to power items and rely on Relentless's movement speed to just be a little bit better. Whereas, yeah, the hectic nature of solo queue, I can see Treasure Hunter probably being a little bit valuable. Secondary, you're going to follow that up with Magical Boots or you're going to get the Skill Tonic and you'll go Futures. But I will just mention, I'm already aware that everyone will go Cookies. Moving on to the other possible rune tree, if your lane is extremely free, or you're not necessarily playing Kai'Sa down in just bot lane, then you go First Strike, Triple Tonic, Futures Market, and then Cosmic. And you'll pair that up with either Mana Flow and Transcendence, or Transcendence plus Gathering Storm. If you do go Mana Flow, then you'll get 6.25 AD when it's fully stacked from the Mirror Mana. This doesn't mean that Precision Tree doesn't have any merit in some lanes where you are going to want to get access to that Presence of Mind, but I don't think that it's actually of the utmost importance. There's a lot of clear benefits to the new build that the old build didn't really have. The old build definitely took a lot longer to come online, and the old build also didn't have access to skipping a point in R, and in addition to that, also the skill tonic, which is now a new rune in League of Legends. What this means is that Kai'Sa, because she's able to come online by third and fourth dragon, she's arguably top five champion or something in the game because of how little interactiveness champions have against her. We're talking about a champion that has 3,000 total range on her W. And for reference, if you're wondering just how difficult that is, Jace has 1600 range on his EQ enhancement. Dareth has up to 1450 based on his channel time. And even Varus with his piercing arrow actually only gets to 1595. This is a very uninteractive ability to try to play against. And because it hits so hard at two items for Kai'Sa and because it gets those additional ability points, it's a very unfun thing to play against, and it makes it very, very difficult for opponents to interact with it. People who have watched my streams or my videos the last couple of years know that generally, I rarely think that a champion is ever truly broken and that it violates the game. Examples of champions that were violating the game is when a champion is supposed to have a thematic counter, and the things that are supposed to thematically counter that champion fail to do so because either the champion's numbers, or their kit, or other itemization perhaps inside of the game doesn't really allow them to be answered. I wholeheartedly believe that the current iteration of Kai'Sa combined with the runes and items actually doesn't allow for counterplay that should be able to counter her. And because she has the numbers that she does and everything else, it actually moves her into that absolutely broken tier. So Kai'Sa is a control champion. So trying to force things, trying to rush through the early mid game transition or mid to late transition doesn't make any sense. Because people love analogies so much, what I'm going to basically compare this to is sort of like Planeswalkers and Magic the Gathering. And what I mean by that is sometimes champions, depending on how you itemize them and tech them and do everything else, Sometimes they are just trying to do entirely different things. And if you judge them by what they could do, had they done something different, then you're going to end up missing the entire point. This is really akin to like the Teferi from Phyrexia versus the Teferi from Hero of Dominaria, where they're clearly trying to do two entirely different things. One really cares about creatures and the other one cares about total pure control. One of the things that I do want to point out when using the MTG Planeswalker reference is a lot of people will often say stuff to me like you need E-Upgrade or you need, you know, something else going on inside of the build and it's just not true. This version of Kai'Sa is strictly trying to do something that other versions of Kai'Sa are not trying to do and trying to combine all of them or make them do this exact thing change the itemization up a little bit and compromise in other areas, it's just not worth it. You're literally just trying to develop a different card at that point. This version of Kai'Sa has by far and away the least counterplay, and because of that, it also further helps you just promise inevitability inside of the game. The other thing is that obviously this is going to have infinitely more success in competitive than it would have inside of solo queue, where the environment is way more coordinated and everyone's on the same page. The whole thing about Kai'Sa is your team doesn't go first, she forces the enemy team to go first because it is really, really, really hard to mess up with a 3,000 range advantage shooting nukes across the entire map on such a short cooldown. And again, because of that target range advantage, it is so difficult for them to do anything. Things that should actually be able to thematically counter Kai'Sa can't counter her. And even now, because of modern itemization and the new rune and whatnot, it is even difficult to try to dragon stack rush against her, which used to be one of the weaknesses that she would have had last year. So at two items, she's Thanos. At three items, she's Exodia. It's really, really hard to lose games with her. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope to be able to make more different types of videos like this one and other things that I've just been observing the last like two months being back to co-streaming and everything else because uh, there's a lot of things that people just aren't noticing and doing and it's interesting. So... 
Anyways, that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Kaisa is the best champion in League of Legends right now.